This is Pursuit of Happiness Radio. As we all know, there is a downside to freedom of speech. Pursuit of Happiness Radio. In America, you have a right to be stupid. Pursuit of Happiness Radio. This is America, and in America, if something sucks, you're supposed to be able to get your money back. This is Pursuit of Happiness Radio. Great googly moogly. I don't know what that means. I hear old people say it sometimes. Hi, I'm Ken Webster Jr. It's time for Pursuit of Happiness Radio. That can only mean one thing. We're about to inject some infotainment into your brain canal. Get ready. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Hey, I got the whole crew with me here today. Not only is Christopher Little here, our producer extraordinaire, super producer Chris Little, to the stars of Afternoon and Evening KPRC, <laughs> but also uh, but also the beautiful and lovely and extremely talented Sandra Peterson Hi, is everybody. here. Hi, everybody. Hey! What day is it? It's Friday! First Amendment Friday! And if you're a sandboxian, or if you're not, call the show now. Open phone lines. First Amendment Friday means you could call us right now on the air and say anything. Any mundane question, comment, insult our broadcast performance, ask us for a barbecue recipe, tell us about the uh, tell us about the, the regatta that you're having this weekend. Doesn't matter. Call the show now, 713-212-5950. You're listening to Pursuit of Happiness Radio. Do you know what this song is about? Uh, yes. yes, I do know what this song is about. It was a groupie. Yeah, no, actually not exactly a groupie. She was a George, model. George Harrison's wife. Yeah. Yeah, I know the whole story. I'm a I'm a huge Beatles well, you, and uh, Eric Clapton fan. Well, you could marry a groupie just because she's your wife doesn't mean she can't be a... <laughs> She's the other guy's wife. <laughs> and what was her relationship with Eric Clapton? They got married eventually. And wasn't there another like weird, yeah. weird story like a love child or a shmishmorshin or something like that? Mm, I don't think so. Not then. Um, but Eric Clapton was brought up to believe that the woman who was his older sister was actually his mother. Yeah. Hey, a lot of crazy stuff happened mm-hmm. this week. Uh, it was bonkers. Our, our whole brought... We're here till 5 p.m., by the way, just so you guys know. Yeah, uh, you get three hours of me today. You get three hours of us. Yes. But expect, I'm going to have you do most of the heavy lifting. <laughs> Is that all right? But, yeah. but, I mean, the midterm elections happened, and then moments later... It was like the midterms were 100 years ago. Exactly right. When those people showed up at Tucker Carlson's house, I was disgusted. That was that was incredibly strange. And, and it was unsettling, says our producer, Chris. Antifa coming after the wife and children of a Fox News personality is totally uncalled for. Well, someone I think is on hold to talk about this. Did you know that that Antifa group, that group from D.C. is the same group that went after Heidi Cruz? Really? So they have a history of going after women and kids. Yeah, okay. They're those are those are stand up guys. Sandra, do you know what's weird about this? What? Sometimes when I think about news stories like this, I just think, Oh, if they if they ever did that to me, I I would relish the moment. I would seriously, please understand what happens. If Antifa goes after my wife, I'll end up at a prison cell. But if they came after me, I'd publicly humiliate them. Well, you're a little kinder than I would be. If they came after me and tried to break down the door to my house, Let's just say that they would be met with overwhelming force in response. They're protesters, and they they started off, first they walked up and pounded on the door. Yeah, they cracked the door. Yeah, so right from the get-go, it was... Like, you cowards, you're, you're messing with with a woman who's home alone. Anyway, I think Tucker was in New York at the time because that's where Fox is shot. Yeah, he said that he wasn't home. We're getting calls about this, so let's go ahead and take one. Hey, Michael, you're up on the north side. Where about the Heights? Uh, you're at uh, that Cedo. Ah, okay, right on. Because you know the Heights. I'm, I'm. I don't know this, but I would suspect that if you were in the Heights, there's definitely an Antifa guy living down the street. Probably for you. so. <laughs> What's on your mind, Michael? Yeah, right. Well, I mean, just, just this whole uh, thing is crazy. I mean, the left keeps going harder to the left. Um, uh, I mean, you heard Trump saying jobs, no mobs. I mean, like this, this it continues to come right after the election. What do we see? A big mob on the left. Um, I, I mean, I'm I'm more of a libertarian, but I mean, I'm I'm getting dragged more more and more to the right, or I think the right is being dragged more and more to, to the center. Uh, but I think this kind of stuff is ridiculous. I think you absolutely nailed it. I've said the same thing, Michael. I relate with you. Uh, I, I, I'm a I'm a libertarian conservative. I'm I'm kind of a Rand Paul uh, Republican. You know what I mean? And if you had told me. 
three years ago that we'd be defending Donald Trump on the radio, I wouldn't have believed you. I certainly wouldn't have believed that he would have been president. I mean, that there's no way that's going to happen. But back before the uh, back before the midterms earlier this week, uh, I think this was about a week ago, Hillary Clinton did this interview. Mm-hmm. And they asked her, look, when are we going to get civility? You people, your, your supporters, your constituents, your voters, your core... Your core demographic is going after conservatives and their family members in public places. And that's when Hillary Clinton had this to say. Computer is very slow. Uh, would I like to install Windows Media Player? Oh, great. Is that, are you kidding me right now? Is that, is that where she said that, that we'll only start being civil if if our side wins? Yes, that's exactly what happened. She yeah. said, hang on a minute. Here we go. Is this going to play? Ah, live radio. Anyway, so, Michael, what do you think about that? Are you, uh, you know, are, do you think that Hillary lied to us? She told us we'd get civility after the midterms, and we didn't get any. Well, you know what's funny, is, and I'm sure you know this, is right uh, right before this, what, a couple months ago, or maybe late, late, earlier this month, she was saying well, this is a time where we can't be civil with, with the Republican Party, right? We can't be civil with people that are uncivil towards us and don't, don't agree with us. So, I mean... Hillary Clinton, she's a washed up politician. She's foot flopping all over the place. Hopefully, we don't see her in American politics anytime soon and in my lifetime in 2020 or going forward. But, uh, I mean, you know, that, 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 that's, what, um, she, that's what the, she does, and that's what a lot of the Democrats do, that they just, when it, when it gets hot, they try to turn it down. But the base, their, their, real, their base is far to the left. And I think what really needs to be done is. The left needs to address their base, or the Democrats need to address the hard left. Um, what you see in the Republican Party or on the right is that libertarians and conservatives hate the alt-right or people that, you know, um, leftists could say are fascist or even quote-unquote Nazis. Conservatives and libertarians hate those people. But what happens on the left? Democrats don't mind the leftists and the communists and the socialists. If Bingo. Anything, they're in Bingo. Great. That's right. Yes. Michael, you nailed it. Michael is very bright, obviously. He's a young man. Michael, I know who this is. Can I, Michael, can I explain who you are on the air? Or do you not want your identity? Please, please explain. Okay, this is the former uh, YLA state chair conservative uh, uh, president, right? You're, you're, he was a member of the Young Americans for Liberty, right? Yes, sir. I actually founded Young Americans for Liberty at the University of Houston. I, I was formerly the Texas state chair at Young Americans for Liberty. Uh, conservative commentator i i'm on isaiah, isaiah carry all the time and i have my own podcast but yeah i'm always i'm definitely uh in the republican libertarian uh movement here in houston how old are you michael i'm 24 so you're just young enough i think where you're a millennial right yes sir if you were a year younger you'd be generation z right i think a few years younger i'd be Gen Z. am on the lower millennial side i hate to brag but i'm gonna right now sandy did you realize like how intelligent that we're getting these young listeners to track it to this show, uh-huh. and they're brilliant people. They like, are. Did you hear Ray when he called yesterday? He oh, would... I, look, I've known Ray for a couple of years and met him when he was still in high school. Right. He's this the... kid is... Very bright. He was at the Young Black Leaders for Trump, yep. the Young Black Concern. Yeah, he... for that, that uh, we... Turning Point USA put together. Right. We get a call from him yesterday. Today we get a call from Michael Anderson, the guy who put together the Young Americans for Liberties. He's the state chair. He was the state chair for mm-hmm. Texas. I assume you're done with college now, Michael. Is that why you're former? YAL state chair? Well, this is actually my final semester. So, yeah, I just got out of YAL <laughs> so that way I can finish up college and focus <laughs> on the future. But, hey, Young American Liberty might just be in my future. I haven't decided as of yet. But, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to go on my own path as of now and finish up college. Nothing wrong with that. What are you going to do after college, dude? Uh, still trying to figure it out. Um, I am contemplating continuing edu- my education, but really I'd like to get out and work. And uh, the Liberty Movement is amazing. I really got to give it to Young Americans for Liberty. They're uh, forever expanding in everything they're doing. Um, I don't know as much as I used to because I used to work for them, but um, I know they've done this operation when it's the door thing where they're electing and endorsing uh, state representative candidates here, even in Texas. Right. Uh, one of them that they got was Mays Middleton here in Texas. That was at Galveston. Um, I, I got the chance to go up to Missouri and uh, help get Dirk Eaton uh, elected. He's 24 years old. Actually, maybe he's 23 years old. A young guy. Gets sick, gets I love that. I think that's so awesome. Michael, we need more people like you. What's your Twitter account? I want people to follow you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my Twitter account is at Michael, the number four, 
freedom. Michael, the number four freedom. Michael for freedom, but a number four instead of F O R. I I totally get that. I want everybody to go follow Michael. Um, it, it, I'm really proud of the fact that we have people like that listening to this show, Sandy. I think that's such I, a yeah. That's such a great way to start the show. That's I, such a good caller. I think he ought to be running for Harris County Judge in well, he's 2022. Qual- <laughs> he might be qualified. Uh, I'd say he doesn't. I'd, I'd say, say he's probably more qualified. I'd say he doesn't have any experience, but apparently that doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter. Lena Hidalgo. Lena Hidalgo doesn't listen to the show like Michael does, unfortunately. No, Michael Anderson's very cool. Um, I am. I am. It's refreshing to know. You know, you see people like Alexandria Ocasio Cortez mm-hmm. out there. You see people like Lena Hidalgo, and you think, oh, no, this next generation is a bunch of liberal fruit bat nuts. They're going to absolutely destroy the country. They're getting elected. That's terrifying. I don't think I'm responsible enough to hold office. How the hell could they be? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez doesn't have enough money saved to pay for an apartment this month. And, yeah. And she's, and, she, and she's supposed to be able to decide what and, happens to the future of our country. Hey, listen up. Here's the thing. Everybody on hold right now, don't hang up. You're all going to get on the air. Anybody that's on hold that hasn't talked on the air yet, stick around. Uh, anybody that wants to get in on this, 713-212-5950. That's 713-212-5950. Pursuit of Happiness Radio on KPRC 950.